Yeah, um, I'm a buyer of the yen, but I think it's just in the short term, it does look like the market is just ignoring um, the rate hikes, the recent rate hikes, and and that's really because it was seen as a bit more of a, a, a dovish hike because the uh, governor, Governor Ueda, Governor uh, Bank of Japan governor, he when he came, when he when they hiked rates, he didn't uh, say anything about forward guidance. So he didn't say, all right, then well we're going to continue to you know hike this year, and it's going to be maybe about two more hikes or anything like that. He just hiked once, and then that was it. So it was seen as a bit of a dovish hike. Now, typically, and again historically, when central banks hike. They don't do, they don't hike, you know, like a one and done. They, they, it's the start of a cycle, right? They normally hike in a cycle. So they very rarely ever just hike once. So if central banks are starting to hike, then it's, it's a hike and cycle and then they hold and then they cut and then they hold and then they hike. And that's really what, you know, the cycle is. So if they started to hike, which they are the only central bank, you should expect at least a few more uh, hikes to come, right? So the fact that he didn't say anything is, you know, that's one of the um, the things that's going against the Japanese yen, I guess, in the short term. The other thing as well is known as the carry trade, right? And the carry trade is basically um, where traders can borrow uh, the um, a lower yielding currency. So, for example, the yen was in the negative. It's now at 0%. Yeah. And basically, if you then borrow at 0%, which is nothing, and you can, uh, you know, put your money into a higher yielding currency like the dollar, for example, and the dollar, um, you know, is it, was it 5.5%, something like that? 5.5%. Imagine you're literally getting 5.5%, the difference between the two, yeah, as, as as a return, right? That's that's just easy money. So that you know, when the Japanese yen is seen as basically a funding currency, which is basically it puts pressure on the the yen, right? But what we're looking for, really, if if you have a situation where the Bank of Japan are in a hiking cycle, let's say, right back up here, we're in a hiking cycle. And let's say the, the the dollar starts to be in its cutting cycle. Yeah. And we're on this end for the dollar and many other currencies, by the way, not, not just the dollar, it's going to be the euro and every other currency, right? Um, then that gap between, you know, that starts to come lower, right? So 5.5 to 5.25 to 5%. And in fact, this starts to, you know, increase, right, from 0 to 0 0.25 to 0 0.5. And the gap between the two starts to erode, right? It starts to get smaller and smaller. And then the carry trade doesn't look so effective. And that's when you're going to likely have the Japanese yen start to increase in value. But at the moment, although they've increased from, you know, minus 0.1% to to uh to zero percent it does look like traders are you know still not you know swayed to kind of buy the yen just yet until they really start to see data supporting more rate hikes from the bank of japan and in fact uh rate cuts going you know from 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 either the dollar or other currencies right and so you might see you might look at the dollar yen Right. And go, oh, my days, like, you know, we haven't done anything. It's, it's you know, it's still going higher and higher and higher. Oh, one sec, guys. One sec. I think the uh, my recording has stopped. I don't know why. Sorry, guys. One second. One sec, one sec, one second. Capture. Oh, that was strange. All right, sorry, my, my desktop um uh screen recording software just suddenly stopped. I don't know why. Anyways, um, and I've bloody cleared the thing, but the point I'm trying to make is this is the um 
the yen uh, should really be a buy. Uh, and it's buy now, I think, in my book, maybe a bit early. But ultimately, what you're looking for is, oh, that's what I was talking about. It was the dollar, dollar yen, right? So the dollar yen, right? You might see it just basically doing something like this on the dollar yen and it's not going anywhere, et cetera, right? If you look at it on like a higher time frame, like daily. But if you look at, for example, the Swiss yen, yeah, you'll see, in fact, the move is more pronounced to the downside, right? Meaning that the yen is strengthening. Why is that? Why is it that the yen is strengthening against the Swiss franc, but not so much against the dollar? And this is where we, you know, it's, you're, you're, you're trying to figure out which pairs to trade, right? And understanding which pairs to trade. Um, and it's because the Swiss franc, and we'll get to the Swiss franc in a little bit, but the Swiss franc managed to cut. That's exactly it, Ken. They've cut rates, right? They're the first central bank to cut rates, yeah? Whereas the dollar is holding rates, and it looks like they may hold rates for a bit longer. So you've got one central bank that is that is hiked rates, one central bank that has cut rates and one central bank that is continuing to hold rates. So what you're looking for ultimately is the biggest divergence. So you're not looking to, if that's the yen hiking rates, if that's the dollar and that's the Swiss franc, the best trade is the dollar Swiss or the Swiss, sorry, the uh, Swiss yen, right? Yen Swiss. That is what you want to look to trade. Yeah, that you're not looking at this. Yeah, you're not looking at the dollar yen. You're looking at the Swiss yen because they're cutting, they're hiking. That's the bigger divergence. And so um, when we look at a Swiss yen chart, and in fact, actually, before we even get to the Swiss yen chart and the uh, and the yen currency, um, there was an article which is which was actually very interesting. So if we go to the, uh, the post it in the Japanese yen channel. And it was the, oh, I don't know what's going on. What is happening with my, uh, with my software, my desktop software? Sorry, guys, one second. Let me just re-record. Right, so you've got this article here from Bloomberg. And what it's saying is, ah, do you know what? I'm going to have to just... Uh, use the uh the um zoom recording so what it's saying is is it says state street and city group see frank replacing the yen yeah for carry trades so that's interesting it says traders are starting to turn to the swiss franc as the top choice for funding carry trades instead of the yen potentially alleviating pressures on the yen currency so remember i was saying obviously that you know the carry trade is you're borrowing the currency with the lower um uh, uh, interest rate and then you're buying one with a higher interest rate obviously the smart money is seeing that the that, that japan is looking to high rates and then the swiss franc are looking to cut rates so if that's the case then why buy, why use the the yen as the funding currency when in fact the bigger divergence is likely to be the swiss franc right and so it takes pressure off of the yen sells so you can have a read of this anyway yeah uh, one second. So Addy says, but what currency would be on the other side of the carry as one is looking to cut towards the end of the year? So Addy, uh, I know, I know I can't <laughs> because I've only got limited time today. I've only got probably about another maybe 45 minutes or so, maybe, maybe an hour or so. The, remember, fundamentals is going to be this is the start of your journey. I know you've only joined, right? So believe me, <laughs> this is all in the course and this is all something that you will learn. But as I said, I mentioned previously, it's really about understanding which is the strongest currency and which is the weakest currency. And so the way to kind of understand another way to understand that is going to be this. Yeah. Is Let's say we were, this is the timeline and this is 25, 2025. Yeah. And this is where we are right now. The, 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 
this is called like leading and lagging, I guess, um, or I've termed it anyway, in terms of interest rates. So we've already seen the Swiss franc cut rates. Yeah. And let's say that was in March. Right. We've got April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and December. Right. And so these Swiss, the, the Switzerland, Swiss National Bank have already cut rates. So automatically, this is the one that you want to sell. Yeah. This is this automatically becomes a sell. Now, depending on where you are in the timeline, will depend or what well, I guess will we'll dictate as to what currencies you should be buying or selling. So at the moment, the dollar, the euro, the Canadian dollar, uh, and who else is there? Uh, and maybe the, uh, I'll, put the, I'll put the pound in there as well and the British pound are all kind of expected to cut in June. And then around August at the moment, I think it's the New Zealand dollar, and then you've got the Australian dollar, yeah? And the only one that's not on here is Japanese yen because they're looking to hike rates, so they're not, you know, on this, on this, um, on the cutting cycle. So the currency, the currencies you're looking for or looking towards buying and selling, yeah, is going to be the 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 currency that is first of all cutting sooner versus the currencies that are cutting later yeah that's what you're ultimately looking towards and so the best trade at the moment the strongest divergence currently would be the swiss franc versus the australian dollar yeah now this also as well changes with data so it's not set in stone so let's say for example i don't know the pound yeah the the, the uk um inflation stays really really high in fact inflation starts to rise yeah the next data that comes out do you think where do you where do you think the pound will likely move in terms of um will they will they hold for longer or cut later or would they cut sooner? Addy, what do you think will happen? If inflation rises, yeah, let's say it rises back up to, I don't know, what is it now? Uh, I don't know, maybe it raises up to 5%. Yeah. What is the central bank likely to do? Is it likely to hold for longer or is it likely to cut sooner? In case of higher inflation, yeah. Let's say, for example, da inflation data comes out tomorrow. Exactly. And it holds for longer, right? They hold for longer. So a hold for longer would do what to the currency? Would it appreciate the currency or would it devalue the currency? Considering we're talking about the Swiss franc as well on the other side, right? So we're looking at pound Swiss. So if they're holding for longer, yeah, which way should the Swiss franc, the pound Swiss currency go? Should it go up or should it go down? Or anyone else? I don't know if Addy's, Addy's there. I'm not too sure. He's, uh, or maybe he's thinking about it. <laughs> Yep, Ken says to the moon. Right, does everyone understand why? Erfan, Ben, Pierre, David, welcome, by the way. Oh, okay, you're cutting in and out a little bit because the internet, but you get it. Yeah, that's exactly it. So that is ultimately what you're looking towards, right? As long as Swiss don't get inflation, yeah, that's exactly it, right? So if, if, if Swiss get inflation then they're likely to cut less, which will likely to probably start to appreciate the currency a little bit. But as I said before, once, once you're on the cycle, typically, if you start cutting, it's very rare that a currency will just cut once. So typically, they do start to cut, you know, several times 
And that is really the beginning of the cycle. And that's what everyone's pricing in. Yeah. So that's ultimately what we're looking at. And this, by the way, currencies can move. So we were talking about the dollar earlier, right? And we were saying that inflation is likely to be sticky because of oil, um, you know, factory orders are coming in, et cetera, et cetera, right? So all the data at the moment, I say all the data, but there's a lot of data pointing to higher inflation or stickier inflation or stubborn inflation, yeah, meaning that it's not coming down as much and the economy doing well, right, or doing better than expected. So in that environment, you're, you're, you're seeing the the, the dollar potentially move later in terms of having to cut later, right? Which is then should appreciate the dollar. Yeah. That's basically what it is. And so whenever data comes out, you're always trying to think, is that data or will that data influence the central bank to either cut rates sooner, hold where they are or cut rates later? That's what you're looking for. That's what you're looking towards. Yeah. So every data that comes out, that's what you're looking towards.